Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, it's your boy once again, Sam, a.k.a. The Train Mother Main. My weatherers and blatherers and blatherers. <laughs> So once again, if you don't like my intro, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm glad you're here. So I wanted to do a little how-to today. Um, as you can see, I've got some more progress done on the layout. Go watch the previous update from last week, you could see, but that's not why we're here. Um, I decided I wanted to make some how-to videos, some new styles of content, um, just to kind of, you know, make the channel a little more diverse versus just me screaming and showing you my layout. Um, I've done a couple of how-to videos. There is a playlist that I made. Uh, I think there's only two videos. One of them's uh, how I kind of wire my layout and then how I also um, wired for and soldered for DCC. Um, and I think I have a couple of reviews of products as well. Um, today I'm going to be weathering some freight cars. Um, I don't do anything super groundbreaking um, but I wanted to showcase what I do to give them that weathered look. So you can see, again, just some nice gristle. A lot of the lettering's faded. Trucks are a little rusty and weathered, but they don't look completely savage. And then one of my personal favorites that I've done is this Pennsylvania boxcar. Again, just looking at it, it's there's no graffiti. I'm kind of considering this all the pre-graffiti era, so whatever, the 50s, 60s. But just the the wash, you know, you got the roof looking nice and used and weathered and beat on and all the logos are very uh, washed. Got the ladder, some detail, the sides, the roof gangplank or gangwalk, whatever you call it. Um, same thing with this little tanker. I kind of went a little overboard on this one and I'm not super happy with it but you could see the difference between something light and simplistic versus a kind of one overboard. And then really overboard, this was the first car I ever weathered. And as you could tell, I kind of ruined it. I'm not gonna get rid of it. It's still a, it's literally a brand new Pennsylvania hopper. But uh, yeah, I definitely did this car, looked at it, thought it looked cool for about three minutes and realized I went extraordinarily too far, uh, but I guess, you know, there is a learning curve. Um, so again, these coil cars I'm pretty happy with. This box car I'm pretty happy with. The tanker, not overly dissatisfied with it, but from afar it looks better than it does up close. Again, this CSX box car, I did go, I did, maybe, I don't know if I went overboard. I'm kind of leaning towards that I went overboard in a certain aspect and then didn't really finish the job as far as I could have washed a little more to take away from how kind of um, overstated the certain overdone weathering is in certain areas, like the roof. The side I really like, but the roof just kind of pops and I don't want it to pop, I want it to be more dull. So my goal is when looking at a rail yard like this or watching a train roll by, I'm not gonna be standing, you know, three inches away from every rail car admiring and gawking at the weathering details. Um, certain modelers out there, and there's plenty on YouTube I've watched, if you just search how to weather freight cars or weathered freight cars, you can actually do that. And they're more the rivet counter style modelers, which is totally acceptable. I'm not there yet, I should say, but you could literally look at every single detail, the, the couplers, the wheels, the trucks, and it's you wouldn't be able to differentiate it from real life in some cases. It's super impressive. I just want to admire the trains as they roll by and be like, yeah, that box car or that coil car is obviously 20 years old and sees weekly service and has been sitting outside for the majority of its life. So it should not look crispy clean like this box car or these box cars or these gondolas. So I'm going to do a simple, basic weathering technique. It's kind of like a mishmash of five or six different techniques I've seen and put my own twist on it. And with the eight to 10 cars I've done so far, like I said, there's a couple I went overboard on. Here's another one. I did that hopper and this box car were the first two I did. And then I didn't weather again for months because I'm like, I don't like this. I went overboard. Again, that's another brand new freight car. So 
Those micro trains cars, they're about 25 to 30 bucks a piece brand new. So that's about 50 to 60 bucks worth of cars that I, uh, I don't know, tainted, so to speak. But so we're going to be taking this box car today and then four or five of these little Pennsylvania gondolas. And we're just going to give them the basic weather wash. Nothing too extravagant, nothing overly complicated, stuff you can do by yourself. And I'll put about five minutes into each car, let them dry. And then they should be, you know, in my perspective, they should be about done. You can always go back and add a little bit more detail, but um, simplicity is the name of my game. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my paints and stuff ready, all the supplies that I'll need. I got this little uh, easel at Dollar Tree. Uh, you can guess it was literally a dollar. And I've used it about 17,000 times. Wash it off after and it's perfect. So you'll want one of those. Some burnt sienna. These are all just uh, acrylic paints. I buy them in uh, four ounce tubes on Amazon. They're pretty cheap and they last forever and they're super good quality. So we got some burnt sienna, some red oxide. And then you might not think so, but I definitely like to use a little bit of white in there and I will show you why. And then I always use, I always keep some uh, water on hand, fresh and it'll get dirtier and clear, but you'll see why, my technique that I use. So not much, just, I don't know, you don't even need a certain amount, just a thing of water. I got a bigger size and a smaller size. And uh, sometimes I have a third one on hand, like a little micro bristle just to really get in there. But the technique I'm doing today should be fine, which is these two, so. So you don't need much at all of any of these colors. Just literally just a, a tiny little drop, especially of the white and black. Just literally, if you can see, literally just like a pea-sized amount. I'm gonna use a little bit more of the browns and oxides but just about that much it goes a long way so yeah again just a couple pea size amounts worth and you can always add more if you need it so the first one we're going to do is this box car i've had this for years uh, but it still looks brand new, so to speak. It's definitely nice looking, but like I said, the goal of this is to make it look more realistic. It gets used every day. It's sat outside probably 95% of its life. So we're going to give it that warm touch. The first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to look over the car. And obviously it's a box car, just like the gondolas we're going to be doing next. It's got multiple sides and areas that need to be detailed somewhat differently. So you've got two matching sides and then the fronts and backs and then the roof. And then you also have the trucks, wheels and couplers. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of the umber and oxide and mix them together to make somewhat of a rust color. And I'm just going to start you can add a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what you want. I'm also gonna add a little bit of black in here to darken it up a bit. A little more oxide. I'm just gonna start brushing it on the truck's wheels and couplers. You can put as little or as much on as you want and then just kind of feel it out as you go. If you're doing too much, just wipe it off. If you want it to be a little lighter, a little darker, just add the corresponding colors. Obviously, you have the oxide is lighter than the umber, and then the black kind of darkens it all together when you make the little mix there. You can see I've got a little bit too much on here, but those trucks are already starting to look old and weathered and rusty. So I'm going to continue to take that and just make sure and hit it all. I'm going to flip the car over and do the same thing on the other side. The good thing is with stuff like this, both sides, the trucks, the wheels, even two wheels on the same side. They don't all have to look exactly the same. You can add or subtract, make your paint mixtures different. And you're going to have to, as you continue to mix and use and stuff, as I'm doing right now, it's not always going to look exactly the same and you shouldn't want it to, in my opinion. You know, who's to say they didn't replace 
this truck and wheel set six months ago, and this is still the original set that's 25 years old. I'm just making stuff up, obviously, but. So we've kind of got a nice wash so far on both sides of the trucks and couplers. Let me put this brush down for now. And now I'm going to do the body of the car. So what I'm gonna do here, is you're gonna use the same brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of black and mix that together to make kind of nice like greasy gray looking. You're gonna need more white than black by a margin. So now this is, it's not really a dead end gray and it's not really like an actual gray. I got too much on my brush. And I'm just gonna start strategically wiping this on certain areas, like along these lines. And as you can see, there's a lot on there, but that's okay. I especially like to focus on like where the ladders are and the grab irons, um, where any of these extruded spots are like by the doors. Anything that's more 3D, I like to focus on those especially right along the bottom of the car. And then what we're gonna do is rinse off the brush. Not all the way, but just to have the water here. Then what I'm gonna do is, there's a little bit of moisture on this brush and I'm just gonna start running the moisture along the entire car. So where the paint actually sat is where it's going to stick the most, but with the wet brush now, you can see it's taking that and spreading it along the car itself. So I still have some work to do on it, but if you look at it now, this car is actually beginning to look like it's been in use for a while. The rusty color in here too, on the, the top of the roof on the gang walk, I think that's what you call it. You know, you got your little ladder details a tiny bit of the rust down here on the bottom of the car maybe over by the door if you couldn't tell and do the same thing over here just in a couple random areas and we'll do the front and back of the car the same thing give me a little rust on the ladders and on the brake wheel Do the same thing over here. Give me a little black on the roof. And again, not much. Less is honestly more because you can always add more, but once you have too much, it's hard to take it away. So we'll come back here. Kind of see some spots you may have missed or you want a little bit more of. And this is just my way of doing it. You can take what I'm doing and say it sucks or take what I'm doing and take the next step. It's the beauty of it. And then again, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then kind of just take the moisture and brush it along the car. You saw what this car looked like beforehand. And it's already looking exactly how I want it to. So I think that's about where I want it to be. So you could see, and I'll show you the finished product up closer. Let's do this little gondola next, same thing. I don't think I'm gonna do the inside because I one of my next projects I wanna do is build loads to go in these gondolas. That'll be a separate video if or when I ever get to it. But you've got two matching sides. You've got the trucks and wheels and coupler assemblies, and then these fronts and backs with various details. So again, it's the same color. I'm gonna set this down real quick. It's the same color as the box car. The same color, that nice deep Pennsylvania brown. So I wanna kind of make it look similar, but not like they're exactly the same. So we're gonna start in this time. I'm not gonna use any of the rust just yet. I'll put that on as details after. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to my, to 
my gray mixture here. And I'm going to give this a heavy, heavy gray wash all over the whole thing. And it looks like there's a lot on there because there is. I'm going to do all four sides at once. And once you kind of get your technique down, I have a car I just did. This is my second one, and I've got four more I'm going to do in this setting. And you can do them fast. You can take your time, which when I say do them fast, I don't mean rush through it and make them look like crap. I'm saying your technique is your technique. If you know what you're doing and how to do it, you're obviously going to do it faster than I'm showing you. So you can see now it looks super extra greasy to an unrealistic level. So we got that on there. My hands are obviously very dirty. Now I'm going to take the umber and the oxide, make the rust color. I'm gonna hit the trucks. You always wanna get in there because they're obviously very 3D and have multiple faces and crannies and nooks. So it's always okay to go a little extra overkill on the trucks and couplers and all of that. So you can see here, and I am doing this much faster than the previous car. Get a little more on here. And again, mix and match. Not everything has to look exactly the same. I don't want it to. There we go. So we got that rust on here. So then see where there's lettering now. I'm going to take some of that rust. And not the same amount or the same direction, but trying to hit all the lettering and indicators on the car. You can see that. I hope it's focusing well. If not, you'll see the finished product. You're watching me do the technique. Put a little more on here. So now this car is very, very beat up looking, but still a bit unrealistic because there's too much. So I'm gonna wash this brush off nice and good. And I'm actually gonna use a clean brush this time. The bigger brush, more surface area. Get some liquid on there. And I don't want too, too much. And we're just gonna start wiping again. Right now I'm just going up and down. There's these nice, I guess you'd call them riveted edges in there. So it's perfect. Each little rectangle side or each little rectangle section kind of has its own little unique weathered pattern because of how much paint I put, how much brushing I'm doing and all that. And we're just going ahead and wiping it right along. Get a little bit on the trucks and wheels because it'll dry as well. Get a little more water. Wipe it off, leave this side a little worse off than the other side because, again, who knows what direction it was facing, who knows where it's been inside or outside, what it's been used for. Again, you know, a little bit of rust over here, a little bit of drab over here. So the grease finish, I think, looks pretty good. I want to get a little bit more rust on there, so I'm going to go back to my... Painting brush, mix up a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit darker this time. Add just a tiny, tiny bit of black. See, that was too much. And I'm going to do the same thing over all the lettering again. I got the grease finish in there. I want to do the little bit more rust finish. So we're going to do that again on both sides. A little less, a little more, a little sideways, up and down. Now I'm going to come in here with my wet brush again and Instead of going up and down this time, I'm going to go side to side. And then just kind of let that all bead and dry naturally, if you could see pretty well. Yeah, I really like how this side's coming out too. One side, this side's a lot heavier than the other side, but this side's heavier on like the grease, black, and white effect, and this one's heavier on the rust effect, which I like because it doesn't all look uniform. Hit some of those details a little bit. Trucks and couplers and wheels look good. So we're gonna let these sit for a while now. I'm gonna let them dry and we'll come back in a few minutes and look at the finished product. Welcome back everybody. It's your boy. No, I'm not gonna do the intro again. I know some of you would like that, but I know some of you hate it. So I did go to town yesterday. I did show you this box car and this gondola. And then I ended up doing this runner pack of gondolas. And then I also did my five CSX box cars. 
including the one that I had originally shown you. I touched it up and made it not so poppy. So what I did tonight was, uh, I showed you these yesterday too, but I put together a nice train of all of the freight cars that I have weathered by hand, um, aside from the box car, which I destroyed, and the hopper over here, which I destroyed. Those are the other, the first two that I ever did, which I told you did those both together. And then I didn't weather again for months because I'm like, this is terrible. I decided to try it again, which now you can see the results. So as you can see, each individual car weathered exactly how I imagined. Not too much, not overdone. So I figured the best way to show these off is to just get a nice run by from a couple different angles, two or three angles, and then we'll do some close-ups and uh, check out these results. I'm gonna go kind of slow so that each car gets nice and showcased. I'm gonna go a little slower than that even. Like I said, I did all this yesterday. I didn't want to show you actually weathering like 15 cars, I spent a couple hours. Went back and did some touch-ups too, just to be even more detailed. But I mean, just look at them run by. That's the first box car we did, I showed you. This is the gondola we did, I showed you. I had showed you that the last CSX box car in this string of CSX was the one I did first that I kind of went overboard, but not enough overboard on. This one right here coming into frame before the tanker. And now I think it looks much better. That's the tanker I said I did a little too much on, but it looks good further away. And then these are the coil cars. These were some of the first ones that I did after my early mishaps. So let's go catch them from another spot. How's that sound? So eventually I would like to try weathering some locomotives. I just don't have the gusto yet. I also would like to show you from many, many angles what my layout is not complete scenery wise yet. I'd like you to actually see it when there's scenes like this and the run by I just did where there's actually some detail in the foreground. But as you can see, this is just a portion of my fleet that I put some time into and just look how phenomenal they look. Very, very, very happy. And this scene's not really finished either, but just a nice angle with the switch in the tunnel. I did some of this foliage today, if you know where I'm at on my layout. And they just look nice and weathered, nice and used. But nothing too overkill. Very basic and simple yet effective weathering. Well, I uh, hope you found this video helpful and useful or that you got something out of it. Leave me a uh, tips or tricks, Tony Hawk style. If you like what you see, think I could be doing better, think that I suck, please let me know all of the above or below in the comments. Please subscribe. If you have any channels or things you'd like me to check out or anything you want to steer my direction, please let me know. Um, other than that, I appreciate you all. Thank you for uh, watching, taking the time. Go check out my other videos, my layout, all that good stuff. If this is the first video of mine you've ever seen because you searched for the how-to, this is my current layout. Go check out my layout build series. There's a ton of videos, old layouts too. And uh, welcome to the community. I appreciate all of you. Train main, weathered train main. <laughs> Out.